Hello, everybody. Welcome to Studio C in beautiful West Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This is video three in our series on using Java GUI and the IntelliJ GUI Swing Designer. Uh, in this particular example, we're going to work uh, with creating what's uh, what I'm going to call a currency converter. So essentially what we're going to do is build a very simple thing that introduces a new component called the combo box. And what happens is you're going to be able to put in, say, a, a dollars in Canadian, which is where we're uh, producing this uh, document documentary um, and uh, choose from right now I have three options US dollars euros or bitcoins I hit convert you'll notice as, as I switch this it changes the label down below um, and of course if I resize this it kind of changes where those things go and we hit convert and it gives me the, the equivalent in, in US dollars in this case or in Bitcoin of course Bitcoin is worth not very much so if I just convert now I get very very few bitcoins for my $50 Canadian so that's what uh, our, uh, our project is gonna do is gonna talk a little about working with additional components and it's just sort of an introduction to to the new components and, and in video four we're going to get into a lot more new components because this is also only our third video and only our second using the, the built-in builder I'm going to I'm going to continue to talk about and demonstrate changing fonts and colors and things like that and then in future videos I'll just skip over that as part of the uh, uh, as part of the lesson so all right let's get started all right, here we are in IntelliJ, and you can see I've got a, uh, a folder for GUI lessons, so a, a package already created in a project, so if uh, uh, that's kind of explained in my first video, so I'm just going to remind you of that process, though. I This is the package I'm going in, it's called GUI lessons for me. I'm going to right-click that and say new, and you're going to go all the way down to swing UI designer and choose GUI form. So the first thing it asks you is the name of that form, and it's going to also create the Java uh, class that goes along with it. So it actually stored in kind of two separate uh, separate components. So I'm going to call this a uh, currency converter and in this um, uh, in, in this example we're going to continue to do everything in one uh, package one single Java class. Uh, however, what you're going to find as you move forward and get things more complicated, is you're going to want to actually separate your your main class from your GUI class. And there are different ways you design uh, programs in uh, you know bigger and bigger pieces of software. And and um, one of the things they talk about is separating the the view as they call it uh, from the from the rest of the code. So that'll happen in a, in a future video. For now, we're doing everything all in one. So as a reminder, what it does, it creates a Java class, which is almost empty right now, and then this form. And the very uh, first most important thing, and I'm not sure why they do this by default, they do not give this original panel a name. And if you were to try to run your program without giving this original panel a name, it gives you an error, and the error is not very clear as what it is. So always the very, very first thing we're going to do. And I'm going to actually start calling mine main panel as a standard uh, as a standard uh, naming convention. And that's all I ever usually do with that first one. I don't change any colors in it. I don't change anything else. Because what I'm going to suggest you start to do is use additional panels to help um, to help control your layout a little bit better. So if you want something kind of goes across the top, because uh, you probably noticed, but I had a sort of a title currency converter I want that to be across the title top and that's the only really thing that's there uh, and then my other components are a little bit lower on so this will give me a little bit of opportunity to control the layout a little bit more if I use multiple panels to contain those so I'll show you what I mean by that so I'm going to pull in a J panel across the top right away I'm going to give that a, uh, a bit of a background color um, just so it stands out maybe I'll just use the same color I used in my sample here uh, I think I've got that kind of reset but I obviously you can choose anything you want and again, when you do it, it doesn't show up until you click off it. I don't know. Just got to kind of deselect. Uh, and then I'm going to do a second panel directly below. Now, when you pull this in, see what actually, let me uh, let go of that. One of the things it does, it creates these dividers. So this divider is not something that that, that uh, is in the visual when you actually run it, but it is something that helps the, the UI designer determine the layout. So you have to work with those dividers, and sometimes they, they help you, and sometimes they're a hindrance. But one of the things you'll notice if I click this J panel and start to drag, it says, oh, do you want to put it here, or do you want to put it here? Or in my case, I want to put it on a bowl. So I kind of, you can sort of see the way I'm, I'm kind of, I'm still holding and dragging down and let it make sure it goes across the whole thing and that looks like that. Now I'm going to exaggerate this color scheme by making this uh, a different color scheme just so it's really obvious what's going on here. Um, I'll just, maybe I'll just change the color just slightly. There it goes. Just two slightly different colors just to give you guys the the obvious visual. You probably wouldn't want to do that in the in the actual program. You want it to be uh, similar in colors. Okay, so these panels are by themselves. Now right now they don't have any name other than 
uh, uh, they'll end up calling them J panel one and J panel two. I do suggest right off the bat you do uh, you do name them. So I'm going to call it top panel, and the second one I'm going to call bottom panel. Now, renaming fields only really becomes super important once you are starting to do code with them. So eventually we're going to start having the ability to, to have turn panels on or off. So it becomes important to have those names. Um, so you're going to see once we start adding more and more components, you're also going to want to start naming those components as you go because otherwise you're trying to figure out what is J field, what, J text field one and J combo box two and all these sorts of things. So you're going to have to start to get a little bit better with that. All right. So the first one's just going to be by title. So I'm going to pull in uh, a J label. As I remember, labels are used for um, text as well as for uh, images, which we'll get into in, uh, in a video coming up shortly. And so um, when you first type in there, if you just start typing a J label right away, it's going to uh, do this. So we're going to call this the currency converter. And as a reminder, um, I hope it's ER, not OR. Um, uh, as we do this, it has its default font, but the, the first thing I like to do is go down into my uh, fonts and my colors, and so I'm going to choose a font first of all. I want this to be my title, so I can make it really big. Maybe I'll pick some sort of bolder, funkier looking font. So let's go with this one that just happened to pop up. Change my size, and I'm going to make it really, really, really big based on their, their numbers. Click OK. And yeah, that's pretty good. So that's not bad. So I'll go with that. If I want to change the color, of course, I can go in and change uh, foreground colors for J labels. The background color is literally what you think. The text goes behind it. So if you wanted to have something a little bit fancier, you could play around with that. So I'm going to go with, I'll go with a yellow just because it's going to pop off my, uh, my uh, background color. Okay, so that's all we're going to do in, in the top box. The bottom box is where all the action is going to come. The bottom panel is where all the action is going to happen. So as I pull this stuff in, we're going to make sure that we that we do this right. And and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the 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 field where you can type in the, the, the money. Below that, I'll have a label that says this is the box for Canadian. Then I'm going to choose which type of money I'm going to convert to. I'm going to have convert button followed by the the the, uh, the field that has that number in it as well as the... Um, as the uh, text to go along with it. So I'll pull those things uh, across first. And I am going to uh, name them a little bit at a time. So if you want to kind of uh, pause the video uh, once you see what I've got in and kind of just fill it in yourself, but I'm going to give each of these a, a name uh, as I go. So I'm going to go J text field, pull that in. Um, and I, actually, I'll pull in all four because that way you get the layout a little bit better. And then I'll go and I'll, I'll give them all their names that I want them to. So there's a J text field for Canadian. Then I'm going to pull in this brand new thing called a J combo box. So J combo box are the standard little drop down menus we like to we see all the time. So we're going to create a J combo box. That's kind of the new component we're going to do. And I want to pop in so it goes beside that there. Okay. Uh, I actually want it up at the top. So I'm going to control Z that. Uh, and try that again and see if I can get it to go right beside it. And if you do it just right, you should be able to get it to kind of pop right beside. There you go. Yeah, that's not looking perfect. We'll, we'll have to play around with that a little bit later on. Um, then I'm going to do a, uh, a J button, which is going to be my convert button. I'm going to put that beside there. There we go. I think if I get rid of this, uh, there we go. If I get that, it'll still under it. Um, and then I will do my other text field for my... Um, uh, for the ending money, and then I'm going to pull in a J label underneath this one that's going to allow me to say that this is going to be the Canadian, and I'm going to pull a, another uh, J label underneath this one, which is going to for now also say Canadian, um, And um, uh, but we're going to... Uh, to change it uh, on the fly. Now, the one thing I'm noticing as I'm doing this is, is that these things are not in the background color. So what I've actually done by accident is I've actually created, uh, gone outside the, the panel, which is not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to take the time here to kind of drag these back into the panel. Um, hopefully, I do this properly. And, and But you can see that it's easy to make a mistake based on what you want. Um, as well as uh, it's also easy to fix those mistakes, okay? So if things aren't ever working exactly what you want, you can kind of redrag it, um, and um, we'll play around with that uh, a, little bit later, a little bit later on. Now, actually, if you preview it, though, now, you'll see that, well, it looks kind of odd here. I'm just going to control Z, whatever I did there for a second. should be able to preview this by, there it is. 
right clicking that little thing preview you can see that when it pops up it doesn't uh, um, it's a little bit off on layout but it'll kind of do the trick as we go and again we can adjust the size a little later on as we make it a little bit bigger a little bit taller you can see that it's going to uh, uh, affect a little bit so we definitely would want to play around with layout again layouts are one of the hardest things to get your head around you can see i made a couple mistakes really quickly um, just doing it uh, but we can figure out how to fix those in the future all right, so I'm going to go and name these because I'm going to be using these in code. So this text field and this text field are going to be things I'm going to be working with. I'm only going to have one button. I'm only going to have one combo box. I'm not going to bother renaming those, but you'll, you will see in a minute what they're what they're called. Well, in fact, if I click on the, this box, it's called combo box one. So as long as I remember it's called combo box one or I come back and click on it, I can do it. Same with this button. Um, actually, right, right, right now I might as well type in and change the button name to be convert. Okay, and it automatically converts it to uh, calls it the convert button. So that's kind of a uh, nice thing it does with buttons. And so I got text field, text field. This is always going to say Canadian. This is going to change based on whatever I choose. So this is going to be like the money type. So what I'm going to do with that J label is I'm going to change that to, I'm just going to call it money type. Um, sometimes it's nice to do label. It's a little bit longer when you're writing the code, but that way it really differentiates between that, um, between your other things. Here I'm going to call this text field uh, converted. Okay. This, uh, combo box and buttons, I'm going to leave this first text. I'm going to call this one, uh, Canadian field. So I like to use the word field and label and button, et cetera, in the name of the, uh, name of the object. So this remember is a J text field, which is why I'm calling this a Canadian field, uh, which is why I call this one converted field, uh, which is why I call this one uh, label. So that way it's really easy to kind of help differentiate. It might seem like a lot of uh, superfluous work, um, but it otherwise works. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go around and uh, change some of the, the fonts and, and just make them a little bit bigger. Um, and, but otherwise, I'm going to leave everything else the same. So you are welcome to, or for this example, obviously ignore it. But you remember, you can click in a field, change its text, you can do this. The only thing I want to show you before I pause the video is I'm going to make this one, this field, which is the one that's going to be converted to be not editable. So there is the editable checkbox here. So I can turn that off so that, that the user can't type directly into this. We only want them to be able to fill this in by clicking on the convert box. Okay, so I'm just going to take a moment to pause and uh, and just tidy this up to make it easier for you guys to see, make the fonts a little bit bigger. All right, so well, all I've done right now is I've taken all of the all of the text and I just changed it to be a size 16 font. So I went into font and made the size 16 a little bit bigger. I didn't play bother playing with colors or other things. So I just wanted to do something real quick. I do also want to show you one other quick tip for for fixing some of the um, some of the layout tips. Now it still is better if you can kind of get things laid exactly right. But one of the things you, of course, is I've got these things kind of not lined up right. So what, what do you, what you should be aware of though, is there is a horizontal and vertical alignment setting in a lot of different things. So what I'm going to do with, with, um, with certainly these, these four anyway, at the beginnings, I'm going to make them vertical aligned top so that you can see that they'll jump up to the top. So they'll all be even. And then we'll decide if we want to play around with the other ones as well. Again, remember that it's going to collapse height wise the way we want. But if we, uh, um, if we don't change these at least, then, then uh, it, they're always going to be trying to be centered in between these two, so that could be a bit of an issue. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say vertical align. Again, it's just one of the properties. Right now it's defaulted to center, so we'll go to top. And if I do the same thing on all of them where I make them all top, you'll see that now my alignment will get a little bit easier off the bat. And so, oops, this is a good plan to do if you have uh, it's kind of a simple way to fix some layout things when you're first learning to make it work and this thing again we could always do the same thing with uh, with the words Canadian and of course we could also potentially get them into the same uh, location as well later on if we wanted to but th this is pretty good okay all right, so now I am ready to start uh, doing a little bit more. The one thing we have to do here is we have to put in our currencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to just choose any random currency we want. And what I decided to do when I was when I was doing my little practice run on this is I just went and found a currency converter, and I happened to just find all the different coins, and I happened to notice that Bitcoin is one of the conversions. So I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. So what I thought we'd do is we do Canadian dollars, and maybe we'll do... Um, Let's go with the say the euro, and then we'll do well, we'll do Bitcoin just because why not? And maybe we'll pick something at random like the 
the Chilean peso or something like that. Okay, so we'll just kind of, we'll do kind of any three. But again, obviously you can make this work as much as you want. Um, ideally, we would have a way, of course, for it to automatically go to the internet and find the current exchange rate um, in, on the world currency markets. We're not going to do that. We're going to hard code in those numbers and those numbers, unfortunately, won't be changeable. Um, but that, the idea behind this is more to see the GUI side of things, right? So we're going to do, do that. So first of all, we need to add in the names of our currencies. So when you click on a combo box, remember the combo box is the drop down box. What we need to do is figure out a way to put all of the text into that combo box. Once the text is in there, it actually finds it like it would find something in an array or an array list. In other words, you're going to see later, I'm going to call the get selected index. So the get selected index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, however many things you got down in your, in your drop down menu. So we're going to look at that a little bit later on, starting at 0. Um, where you put it is in something called the model. So when you click on model, you'll see it's empty right now. But if you click on the little uh, uh, little uh, browse icon there, it just will pop up a little window like this. And this is really obvious. What happens is items in the model, one line per time. It's a little bit tough to explain why they call it a model. But model is, um, generally speaking, the data that you're using to populate uh, other things. So we're going to, it's just in this case, it's going to be a, a, an array or an array list, uh, a data structure full of strings. And those strings are the, are the words that we're going to put in. So let's say we want to do Euro and you of course can do any ones you want. I'm just going to do it this way, Euro. And, uh, what did I say I was going to do? I said I was going to do Bitcoin and I said I was going to do Chilean peso. And we'll go and look at the actual conversion numbers in a little bit. So I click OK, and you will see it's here. And if we run this right now, I'll preview it uh, again. There we go. Oops, I have it. Ah. Preview. There it is, and you can see that those those items are there. And it doesn't matter how big your window is, those, those still appear. And if I drag my window a little bit bigger, you can see it just keeps doing it. Now, of course, we haven't done anything at all yet. So the first bit of, uh, of uh, um, functionality I want to do is when I choose this, I want this to be updated. Right? So I didn't. I, I could have even left a blank if I wanted to at first. Uh, but that's what I like to see. So when I say euro here, I want this to say euro here. So when I convert it, it says 50 euros, something like that. Right? So that's the first, uh, the first thing we're going to do. Then, of course, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to use the convert button to go grab whatever is here find out whatever currency it is, and then do the numbering, do the math on there. It, it's it's not really all that complicated. Just We're going to use an array or an array list, uh, an array in this case, to store the current values of a Euro, Bitcoin, Chilean peso versus Canadian. Okay, no, then, we'll do the, then we'll do the conversion. All right, so let's do this update. So whenever we're working with our, uh, our, our components, if you want that component to trigger something, you have to add a listener. So if I didn't want this Euro button, this Euro combo box, drop down box, to change the text here, then I wouldn't need to do anything with this. All of the action would happen in, in the convert button. I click on the convert button, it will go and see whatever this currently is, and we're good to go. Okay. However, if we want this Euro button to change this Canadian, we have to add a listener to, to this. And there's different kinds of listeners when it comes to Euro, uh, to uh, combo boxes, because in a button, it's, it's, I mean, there's different kinds of actions for that, listeners to that, but usually you want to do something when you click on it. Well, not necessarily in, in a combo box, right? If they click on it, you don't, that doesn't mean they're necessarily changing what, what uh, is selected. So we're going to use what's called a state change. So we only want this to trigger when this, when the Euro has, uh, the J call box is a different state selected. So they call it on state change. So let me show you how to do that. Right click. Uh, create listener. And uh, all these listeners are going to pop up. What we're going to do for this is we're going to do a, uh, a, hold on a second. All right, sorry, my apologies. I uh, it was not a state listener we're going to do. I went to look for the uh, the action I thought was there, and it wasn't. We just need to use a standard uh, action listener for this. So right click and create listener, and we're going to say action listener, and click OK. So that's th this is the same process we're going to go through with the button in a little bit. 
So we've created an action listener for the J combo box one. So as remember, this listener is this thing that goes in the background that says when something happens in this box, let's figure this out. So when somebody clicks on this, this is going to do this. Hopefully this will work properly for us. I was expecting to see a state change and it wasn't there, uh, but I'm also using that for my next video. So I think I just got a little bit confused. All right. So what do we want to have happen? Well, all we want to have happen is we want to make the text of this box, which I've called money type label change. So we're going to use money type label dot set text. What we want to set it to is this. Okay. And so whatever is currently active in this. So here's what that looks like. So money type label dot one or label one dot set text. Okay. Now in order to figure out what we want to set it to, we need to get the text out of the uh, out of the combo box, but it's not. They don't actually use the word "get text." You're going to see here in just a second. So that box, remember, is simply called. So I have it up here. J combo box. There it is, right there. Sorry. Oh, my apologies. It's called combo box one. Uh, so combo box one dot get, and it's actually under get selected. So when you see here, when you start typing get selected, you see this get selected index. We're going to use that in a minute to add to look up the currency exchange. Or in this case, we can do get selected item, which will, uh, which will convert it to text if we add um, some empty text uh, to this box along with this. Usually I do quote, quote, plus uh, comma box get selected item. So what this does actually, for those of you that know a little bit more about the computing science side of things, it actually returns an object, not a string. But if you uh, if you say that the object, which is a string in this particular case, um, it'll automatically, Java kind of figures this out in the background. Says, oh, you must want uh, this to be act like a string. So we're going to add this text. All right, so let's see if this actually works. Now we can preview it or we can run it. As soon as you have a, a listener, you can actually start to run it. But as a reminder, we have to get create a main method. So I'm just going to figure out where my class ends, just so I don't make any mistakes here. Maybe I'll write this in uh, in class. And then here, outside of my, my public currency converter, I'm going to right-click and say generate form main. So it's generating the main method with all the things I want it to do. Currency converter, maybe I'll, I'll add a little bit to this Canadian currency converter. And now this becomes a runnable file there we go and all we want to do is see if this will change to Bitcoin and ta-da it is so, so far so good okay now we don't have the convert property yet right and we can't type in there but we can type in here so we're ready to rock okay so now we want to make the convert button work go to the convert button right click it create listener Choose action listener. Okay. Pops us in. Notice that it goes inside the constructor method. For those of you who know your object during your programming, inside this. So it's going to now add a listener to convert button. So this is a little bit trickier to kind of figure out what we want it to do. And um, and one of the other things we might want to do is figure out where do we want to have our data for our uh, for our cur uh, currency numbers. So I'm just going to keep this really clean and kind of uh, self-contain it all in one little thing. But clearly you might find this to be a little bit more uh, uh, beneficial if we did it uh, in a slightly um, maybe more realistic way is a better way to, uh, to suggest it. But that's okay. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of our currency conversion. So I'm going to use that website in a minute to figure this out. So uh, I'm going to call uh, create a string array. I'm going to call it rates equals, um, actually, sorry, not a string array. That's silly of me because I wanted these to be numbers we're going to work with. I'm going to call it double array. Uh, and I'm just going to go and get some currency values here for the conversion. So I did it euro. Um, uh, well, let me better go figure out what I did call those things. I need to have it in order, right? So if I go to my combo box, Euro, Bitcoin, Chilean, Peso. So I'm going to put those numbers all inside here. So I'll go to my little website, and I'm just going to do this for all three. Then one Canadian or Euro is 0 0.06, etc. Uh, 0.065. So I'm going to put that in there, comma. Uh, let's go figure out what the conversion rate is to a Bitcoin. Notice I have a one Canadian dollar on the left side, and uh, oops, I want it the other way. I want this to be one. No, stop that. Okay, I want this to be a one. There you go, 0 0.0008, 
and we'll put that in there as my second one and my Chilean peso which should be I think more than a dollar or I mean Chile Canadian dollars worth more than one Chilean peso there we go and uh, well, that was interesting one is worth 579 Chilean pesos okay so there is our, our conversion factor we're going to work with, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is just to kind of exaggerate what's going on with the, uh, with the actual uh, programming, I'm going to add maybe a couple extra steps in here to, 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 to make it easier for you guys to see what's going on. So I'm going to create a new double uh, called just the, uh, the, the selected rate. right? So this will be what, which of these three numbers get selected. I'm going to show you how we get that. So then we say equals... Um, and we got to have our combo box, right? Which there it is written right here what it's called. So combo box dot get selected index. Now that's not quite right because we want to say, okay, I want this to be the rates at square brackets, right? For a raise, if you don't have raised um, experience, you might not recognize that uh, vocabulary. So I want the rates, which of these rates I want to base it on the get selected index. Okay, so now all we have to do is figure out uh, the the Canadian dollar and uh, and then place that into the um, uh, into the amount. So what we're going to do is we we have to kind of do this again in, in a couple of steps just to exaggerate. So I'm going to do that uh, uh, create a double for the um, I'm going to just call it uh, converted, and I'm going to say this is going to be equal to uh, the Canadian currency. Canadian field dot get text. Okay, now we're going to need to change that into a number. So as a reminder, we have to parse that. Double dot parse double. What are we parsing? Well, we're parsing the text we get. So now that's going to give me a number times the rate. Okay, see if I made a mistake on the, my little math a little bit later on. And then finally, the last thing we need to do, hopefully I haven't missed a step, is we need to change this box, which is called the converted field. Set text. Remember that you need to give it something. Now, if we if we we can use an if statement to kind of pull up the the we can have a second separate array, for example, that has the different you know the euro symbol and the bitcoin symbol or whatever, and have images or, or symbols. But we don't really have that. So all I'm going to do is do the number. So we say set text is nothing plus um, the converted, and I believe we've got everything. Let's see if I've forgotten some step. All right, I guess it's a little bit bigger. So I say I have 50 Canadian dollars. I want to convert that into, sure, let's do euros. And it says euro there and convert. And so I would get 32 dollars and 60, 32.6675 euros. Uh, oh, I could actually add the word euro after that if we wanted to. And just a quick thing, maybe I'll just show you that just, uh, just for argument's sake. Bitcoin, uh, convert. I would only have uh, 0.04 of a Bitcoin. But if I'm going to Chile, we're living uh, the high life, uh, rolling in, in 28,982 uh, uh, pesos. So I thought, you know, why don't we, uh, so I have the money written down here, but just in case you might be curious, I'll add one more little functionality. We're, we're basically done this, but if you want to see how to add the, the text here, um, then uh, we can do that. We simply have to do this. We have to say converted plus... Um, in space, so 640 in Chilean pesos. Um, so plus, uh, then we have to say this same thing we did up here, combo box one dot get selected. And that is actually all. So a couple different ways you can handle some of the little uh, user friendliness issues. So if I have a thousand in 
Bitcoin and I convert, it said I have 0 0.08 in Bitcoin. We can decide if we want to add the S or later or not, right? Chilean pesos, convert. Oh, and I'm kicking. Uh, ooh. Uh, so that's something you have to pay attention to your your sizes. So when we, if you're expanding your sizes, we need to make sure that this is a minimum uh, number of pixels. Actually, that's why I'm going to show you that last little thing, and then we'll call this video uh, to a close. So if I click on this, you can actually see there's a minimum size, and so you can go in and play around. I'm not going to actually change those values right now. I'm just going to let it be. But bear in mind, you can do that with the number of uh, I believe it's the number of characters that it will allow it to to uh, to fit. In fact, why don't we just uh, yeah? I'm going to leave that uh, as it is, but I'll let you experiment with that. All right, thanks everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Next one, we're going to work on some of the more complex uh, a uh, components. This time, I added the J combo box and kind of talked a little bit about some of the other little features. Now we're going to make things even more complicated by adding some sliders, some uh, some uh, different types of boxes you can click on, and other things like that. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good one.